welcome to the Connect Show. We are happy to be here, and I'm one of your hosts today. My name is Tracy Champagne, and I am a small business owner of Small Business Milwaukee and the Friday Fish Fry Guide, which I'm super, super excited about the progress I'm making there. I've been just killing it. Anyways, we're here today with the extraordinary world of small business owners. They are the unsung heroes of our economy, and I cannot wait to share their incredible stories with you today. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Deacon, I'm the adulting coach. I get to help teens and young adults figure out for themselves who they wanna be when they grow up so they can have the courage to suck at something new, confidently decide how they wanna live their own lives and adult successfully. Picture this, cafes, boutiques, and unique shops. What makes it even better? Small business owners pouring their hearts into dreams. Sip that latte, admire displays, their proof that we infuse our world with creativity and love. Storefronts, canvases for hearts and souls. Celebrate these everyday heroes. One of these heroes is my friend and co-host, Kim Nock. Oh my gosh, I got goosebumps. <laughs> yes. oh. yeah, you know. <laughs> wow, hi everybody. I am Kim Nock. I'm super excited to be here for another episode of The Connect Show. A little bit of background on me. My business is Opportunities Knocking. I do some social media management, a lot of online marketing, some event planning, and like Tracy has the Fish Fry Guide, I have a food truck website, Food Trucks of Wisconsin. So lots of fun giving back to the community, and I'm stoked to be here today. In each every in every episode, we feature small business owners beyond entrepreneurs. They are risk takers, dreamers, and community builders. Starting before dawn, brewing coffee, and diving in wholeheartedly, they strive to create an impact. Join us today and witness their inspiring journey on the show. In the world of small business, tales of triumph emerge from humble beginnings. Often born in garages or cozy living rooms, these entrepreneurs' journeys embody unwavering dedication, turning obstacles into victories. With sleeves rolled up and hearts ablaze, they prove that passion and hard work can conquer all. Their stories inspire us to chase our dreams with unwavering resolve. Before we move on to today's show, we want to give you a little background about the show. The Connect Show is now on the fourth season. Mm -hmm. John started it um, with just him and one guest, and he contacted Tracy and he said, hey, I have an idea for a show. And he and Tracy developed this entire beautiful thing that we're now into the fourth season of. I was brought on doing a networking report and I had moved into a co-host position. I absolutely love the idea of giving back to small businesses consistently and being able to spread the word and the love of everything that we as small business owners have to give to the community. So it's an absolutely fantastic accomplishment and I'm so proud to see us in our fourth season. The guests and the hosts are all volunteers. We're all volunteers. Everybody in this room is all volunteering on this show today. And it's pretty simple. If you'd like to be a volunteer also, we can show you the steps. The benefits include getting in front of the camera, becoming a skilled interviewer, and best of all, promoting your business. Uh, so please contact us to get your spot on the show as well. And while The Connect Show is a show created by volunteers, we are looking for your support to keep the show growing. Sponsorship on The Connect Show is a great way to get your business seen and support your peers commercial, plugs in our newsletters, social media, or on our website. If you are interested in being a sponsor of the show, please contact John or Tracy at info at theconnectshow.com. We have to always thank our hosting sponsor, Expansive Works Workspace, where we broadcast this show live every Tuesday at 10 a.m. out of Studio A5. It's a wonderful place to work. We get beautiful views right in the heart of Tosa. There are also locations in downtown Milwaukee, Madison, and throughout the country. If you're interested in becoming part of Expansive's family, visit Expansive.com and we and be, we'll meet you. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to give special thanks to John Taylor over here, aka MK Video who creates the show with all the video work and the editing that goes on behind the scenes. John also has a new community called Mind Body Abundance, and you can learn more about that with the link on the screen that should show up very, very shortly. And um, we have a video. Oh, yes. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Mind Body Abundance experience and platform. We would love to have you join us. 
We have some wonderful opportunities for you to list your business for free, network with the community for free, and if you'd like to take it to the next level, we have opportunities where you can be a vendor, a speaker, you can be on the show, and you can sponsor some of our events. There's a wide range of opportunities for your business, and it may be best if we just jump on a call to discuss what your business does, what you'd like to achieve, and then how the Mind Body Abundance platform can help you get there. As always, we are very thankful that you have come to watch The Connect Show. If you have a topic that you think we should be discussing, please email us at ideas at theconnectshow.com. Today we're super excited to welcome our guests, Melinda Stewart and Kenneth, oh, Whisk. I didn't, I didn't find out ahead of time. I'm so sorry. You can beat me up once you get up here, okay? <laughs> Packing and downsizing and creating logos, making marketing materials and products are smart tools to have in your back pocket. Requirements, if you ask me. The Connect Show is better when it's interactive, so please add your comments in the chat on YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook. It's easy to find us. We'll bring up your comments and add them to the conversation. This is a great opportunity to get expert advice and help your business grow. Our thanks again to last week's guests, Brenda Ryan and Andrew Weinig. Fine-tuning your elevator pitch and building relationships are crucial to having a successful business. Ready to move on to the quote of the day. Let's go. If you're brave enough to say goodbye, life will reward you with a new hello. And that's from Paul Coelho. Oh Coelho. Coelho. I think. I, I'm yeah. so bad with pronunciations. Yeah, I, didn't just, I didn't just mess up our guest. I messed up our quote, too. I think you have to say the goodbye before, before the hello will even happen. The hello is not going to happen until the, the goodbye happens. Have you ever like decluttered your mm -hmm. desk and then you get a new client? Like that, yeah. that happens all the time. Yeah. And whenever I'm feeling stuck, I, I'll, I get rid of stuff. It is the best feeling in the world to get rid of stuff. Mm -hmm. Some people hate it, but man, once I get rid of stuff, whether it's people or things, it really lifts a weight off of your shoulders, no mm -hmm. matter what mm -hmm. it is. And you're like, I was a part of this group, and I don't know if I can name it. It was a Facebook group, but it was like, you got rid of 40 bags of things in 40 days. And I did it multiple times. I do it like every year. And I don't care what it is. It feels so good to relieve those things. And we won't talk about the people. Do you, do you ever find, though, after you've gotten rid of some of those things that all of a sudden you need it again and then you got to go buy it? How yep. do you deal with that? Because that's like You just have to move on. That's just like terrible guilt. <laughs> you have to move on because otherwise that's creating like a hoarder mentality. And I have to do everything in my mind to stay away from any hoarder mentality at all. Mm -hmm. Most things, if it costs you less than 20 minutes to replace or less than $20, you can get rid of it. Oh, that's like, a good way to look at it. 20 minutes or $20. Yeah. If you can go to the store, spend less than 20 bucks to, to replace it, just, just leave it. And if you need it again, you can it. go buy one. But then and I think of people that, <laughs> that like work in, in a hands-on industry and they have to have every tool ever made to use it once and never let go, right? Like some of those never let go situations Oh, you tough. I don't know if you can let go in that situation. That's what tough. If you, oof, that's a hard one. Toolboxes know. have lots of compartments <coughs> for a reason. <laughs> or could we say that we put things away in their place? Is that Does that also consider clearing up the clutter? Claire? Sure. Saying sure. goodbye means you don't have to actually get rid of it. You just put it in its spot so you don't have to look at it. I don't know. But have goodbye you ever goodbye. actually taken everything out of a closet? There's a lot of stuff in there. There is. There is. That's just making me think about some closets right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're gonna with that we're gonna move on to uh, Charlene. Could not be with us today, but she did provide us a great video, and so we're gonna move on to that next. Good morning, Connect Show. This is Charlene Osterling back with another episode of Evolution of Change where I search for people who are business owners, but also realize that after they opened their business, it was their purpose in life to serve. So this week's evolution to change is Dane Hollis, who started Veteran Sanctuary. After serving, he realized that he needed to find ways to heal full circle from everything that he experienced. So healing the internal wounds, as well as the external things that he went through. So he started Veteran Sanctuary after he found that acupuncture is actually something that could allow him to help people heal full circle. 
So all the different facets of healing all in one. That's what led him there. And then as he healed, he realized how many other veterans he could help that served. And he could also help them go to the VA to help cover their acupuncture treatments. So natural forms of healing and helping people with everything from the external to the internal to nutritional, everything that he can actually advise these veterans under one window can actually be covered by the VA and he could offer them a peaceful healing space to come and continue serving their own lives now. So this week's Evolution of Change is Dane Hollis. Hi, I'm Dane, and my Evolution of Change was shifting from being um, an infantryman in the military, serving two tours in Iraq, um, mostly doing damage to people, hurting people, uh, to transition to becoming a healer. And so that journey took me from going to war at 19 to being hurt at 23 and realizing that I did a lot of wrongs and also realizing that I had to heal myself. I tried going through the VA system and didn't really resonate with me. Uh, it was a lot of clinical, a lot of talking, a lot of things that just seemed actually just personal, like not, not really connecting. And so that took me on a journey going through physical therapy, uh, going to school for physical therapy, becoming a personal trainer. Um, those didn't really drive me either. Uh, that brought me over to massage over in California. Uh, that's when I realized there's a really deep mind body connection and it's a cultural thing. It's, it's very, it's very built into how they were raised in Asia, how their medicine works, which is why it doesn't really make sense to Westerners very much. And so through that, I realized I had to circle back around and study the root, which that is Chinese medicine. And so that's what brought me into studying acupuncture because acupuncture once you understand acupuncture you understand what wind is wind in the body doesn't make sense to a westerner but once you understand chinese medicine it does and so it's just understanding the cultural norms helped me there that that's what i'm super passionate about giving them a space to come and hold space you know so yeah that's me i'm dave hollis and this is my evolution of change Thanks, Charlene. I've totally forgot. I should shank, thank Charlene for don't her shank her. Please shank don't her. shank her. Please. Charlene. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm remembering her name properly right now because I had to use Charlie for a while just to remember Charlene. You're great. Anyways, <clears throat> um, uh, we're off to our question of the day. Yes, we are. So, when thinking about improving your business, what are the first ideas that come to mind? Anyone? Anyone? Why did everyone look at me? Why did every <laughs> single person look at me? Because we know you have all the best ideas. I don't have all the, the best, best ideas. I'm in chaos right now. So how do we get out of the chaos is the first thing that comes to mind. How do I get out of the chaos? Clean what? off your desk. We just talked about it. I work on my couch half the time, so, so I'm fine. Clean off so your it's couch. clean. It's, <laughs> it's clean. Off. Work on my couch. <laughs> get a desk. I guess. Right. Get a desk would be maybe there a good, you go. There good you place go. to maybe start. clean out maybe clean out my bag that I carry everywhere. Mm. Because that just gets loaded with stuff and right. it sits next to my couch. Five minutes of decluttering can yeah. again open you up for those new ideas yeah. and new opportunities that maybe you can't see because you're you're cluttered with stuff. So chaos and organization. So that falls mm -hmm. into organization, right? Because okay. everything is chaos, time blocking. Like there's so much. So getting rid of the chaos. You can't organize everything at once, though. You right. got to start no. with again, like five minutes, mm -hmm. and then and then go and. But do you know I'm do. classic for seeing the butterfly or the squirrel, right. and I I start on one thing, and then that leads me into this, and that mm -hmm. leads me into this. So that always happens to me. That's not a once in a while thing. That always happens to me whenever I'm trying to make a big move. So improving your business means improving your focus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, that's a deep question. There's a lot of different guys. ways to do that. And I'm sure yeah. some of our guests past or future will be able to talk about yeah. that. Absolutely. <laughs> what I'm doing to improve my business right now is I'm really studying habits. Because mm. your habits, everything you do every day builds up to what you're going to accomplish at the end of the week, the end of the year. But first, you got to get them done every day. So how do you get them done every day? And how do you get them done every day when you have so many you want to get done? 
So then all of a sudden in my inbox yesterday showed up this book from Jen Sincero Habits. So then I got it and I listened to it. And the thing that I've learned so far to, is that you should take your one habit that you do every day, like you take a shower every day. What can you team up with that habit? So I take a shower every day and then I do this. Or I get into my car every day and then I put my seatbelt on. Like if you team up a habit and then just work on accomplishing the team up of the habit, then you then you can start building up off of that. Right, stacking the habits stacking on top of each other. Stacking the habits on top mm -hmm. of each other. That's really smart. Yeah. I really like that. And yeah. one at a time. One and at one a time. at a time. Exactly. You can't do yep. them all at once. Yeah, because there are some things that I've been trying to accomplish, I'm telling you, for quite some time, and I cannot get my stubborn self to do them. And I'm just yeah, like, you're oh. avoiding it for some reason. Yeah, because what's I just the, don't want to deal with it. What's the cause of the avoidance, it's right? It's boring. It's, yeah. it's not fun. It's not creative. It's ugh. I just don't want to <laughs> do it. So I got to figure out a way to get it done. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to just make myself do it. That's Reward how, myself for getting the thing done than actually doing the thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with re yeah. rewarding yourself. Yeah. I want to hear what the coach has to say. Like, come <laughs> yes. on. Adulting is yeah. fun. Tell so, us. So yes. I, the, what comes to mind that I'll, that I'll talk about here is uh, messing up. I, I'm doing a I'm doing a thing this weekend that I've never done before, never and about the thing. it's the called thing. Warrior Unchained Live. We're doing uh, an event uh, with Wendy Babcock in the Dells at the Kalahari Resort. There are still tickets available. WarriorUnchainedLive.com, um, and I'm the MC. No, so I've never been exciting. an MC before. That's I've done a lot of work to prepare. I think you're going to be fabulous. And what I'm looking at for it was uh, about improving my business. I've been looking at it from this perspective of messing up. Like, mm. I can't wait to mess it up and see what comes out of that. Because it's in those up. messy moments that we learn about ourselves. We learn about the people we're talking to and the, the people we're trying to connect with. Mm -hmm. and, and we grow there. So that's what comes to mind is, is messing up. Because when we start our business, we're very afraid. I'm gonna do it wrong, I'm gonna mess up, I'm gonna look stupid, everybody else knows what, it, what they're doing, and the same thing with teenagers. All my friends have it figured out, they've, they've figured out what they wanna do, who they wanna be. Mm. Um, I haven't, I'm gonna mess it up. So we're so afraid of this, but if we can actually shift and embrace it, and look at the opportunities, like what might I learn if I actually like completely screw this up? And I hope Wendy's not watching because I'm not like trying to screw up her <laughs> event. <laughs> um, and I know it's not gonna go 100% perfectly. No. Because I've learned enough to know that nothing ever does. But no one else is gonna know when you mess exactly. up. Exactly. Except for maybe you and Wendy. <laughs> exactly. Like, oops, or like me before, and I'm like, burp, burp, burp. you know, exactly. I mean, it happens, and then, and then people laugh it off and you move on. Right, or you say, you know what? I totally forgot this thing, let's do it now. And, and you go, and people go with you, and they're happy to see you be a human. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that connects you with your audience, your clients, your customers. Um, it works. Mm. Got some good tips here today. It's, our questions have been really deep lately. Mm -hmm. I'm very thankful that there hasn't, but that there wasn't multiple today because I don't know how I could have <laughs> taken all of that in as multiple. But it was, <laughs> but it was really great. We're not going to do that. So I think with that, do we have anything else to talk about on the question of the day? No, no, I'm, no. I'm curious about what everybody else's answers are going to be on that. I am so. too. Yeah, drop them in the chat. So <laughs> what we are going to do is move on to one of the top rated <laughs> LinkedIn coaches in Milwaukee, Heike Heyman, and uh, see what she has to say about LinkedIn today. So welcome to another edition of Heike's LinkedIn Insights. I help entrepreneurs and career changers take their LinkedIn profiles from blah to magnetic. Today, let's go over some LinkedIn ground rules tied to their terms of service. And this topic came up because of a recent new client conversation I had with someone. Um, if you don't follow <clears throat> LinkedIn's terms of service, you can get locked out of your account and completely banned from the platform. So you wouldn't even be able to start over. To me, that would be a personal terrible loss because I spent years building my brand on that platform, building my network and i'm sure a lot of you who are watching have done that as well <clears throat> so you didn't gather your connections in a week or two and you don't want to mess that up so here are a couple of tips number one every person can only have one profile this is what brought up this topic for me because i had a client conversation with someone who had 
two profiles. It still does, actually. And there are ways to get out of that and not lose all the effort you put into the one um, profile, but you don't want to have two profiles because it's against LinkedIn's terms of service and can get you shut down. But also, you're doing double the work for half the outcome. You have to find connections for both accounts. You have to post on two accounts. Why double your workload? You don't want to do that. Um, other parts um, that you that tie into that one profile you have is you have to use your, your real name. There are no aliases on LinkedIn, so don't even start there. Make sure you comply with all legal requirements in your state, country, etc. Provide accurate information and be professional. This is not Facebook. This is not TikTok. Do you always have to just talk about business? No, but you want to be professional. Number two, you profile needs to be that of a person, of you, not of your business. So don't replace your headshot with your logo. There are other places on your profile you could put that. Um, it has to be a view, which also means that you should talk about yourself in the first person. I, I shouldn't be saying, you know, Heike is, has done this, that, and the other in third person, but I did this. So the next tip is, do not use automation on LinkedIn. I have fallen in that trap myself. Something looked really interesting about connecting with people with automation and not having to type out those messages. And I did get my account locked. This is about 10 years now, 10 years ago. And I can tell you that was some of the most stressful days of my career <laughs> to be locked out of my LinkedIn account. So don't use automation on LinkedIn. It is against their terms of service. Um, so to summarize, comply with LinkedIn's terms, only have one profile. If you have to and you need to find a way to get out of that second one or decide which one to get rid of and how, please reach out. And remember to connect with me on LinkedIn for more tips. The absolute best tips. That is not something that I thought about. I never thought about having another one. I've created a ton of business pages, but I have had clients that have had multiple pages or had their business mm -hmm. set up as their thing, and I'm like, oh, no. And I never thought about the terms and conditions portion of it. So that's really, really interesting. So thank you so much. Helps us mm -hmm. that are helping others with implementing too, right? So let's welcome our first guest, Melinda Stewart. Melinda has a passion for working with people. As a certified senior move manager and owner of Smart Moves, she enjoys hearing clients' life stories as they prepare for their next chapter. Smart Moves was founded in 2003 to help seniors transition to any choices and chores involved in the moving, organizing, downsizing process. When it's time to begin a new chapter in life, Smart Moves will take care of the details of transitioning so clients can focus on the details of living. Melinda can be heard on local radio shows, okay. podcasts, and giving presentations around town. So Welcome to the show, Melinda. So happy Thank to you. have you. Happy what, to be here. So we're gonna we're gonna start mm -hmm. right off into the audience question. Hopefully, you got to hear a little bit about what we were talking about. But when you're thinking about improving your business, what are some of the first ideas that come to your mind? That's a really great question, and we just celebrated 20 years. So we've actually been reflecting on all the ways we've improved our business over the years. Right now, our main thing is thinking about how to continue to spread the word about senior and specialty move management. It's still a young industry, so we're looking at um, using more YouTube and um, social media things to promote what move management is really all about. So that's where we're at right now. Just kind of focusing on the social aspect where it might be lacking because a lot of the people that are going to be moving into those types of community are really, there There are some platforms they're pretty deep into right now, right? Yeah. So, and in the last few years, we've noticed a lot of people who aren't seniors are looking for our, sen our services too. So you don't necessarily have to be a senior mm -hmm. to um, use a move manager. Or even looking for a family member, member right? Right. Yeah, awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. So what is the number one thing you would recommend to someone who's starting the downsizing or moving process then? Well, I love that you were already talking about downsizing and organizing in your, oh. <laughs> in your set because yeah. that ties in so much with what we're doing. So one thing I would say is that, um, as Sarah mentioned, don't try to do too much at once. The research really shows 15 minutes a day of working on downsizing and moving is 
the perfect amount of time. Better start now. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sometimes people say it's going to take me 70 yeah. years to get through yeah. stuff, but you'll be amazed at how much you can get done in 15 minutes. And the goal is to get to that, you know, your timer goes off and you say, oh, darn, I want to keep going. And you'll be more likely to do it the next mm. day versus, you know, overwhelming yourself. And then the other big piece is having a game plan so that you're not kind of spinning your wheels. So mm -hmm. either talking to an expert or on your own coming up with that plan so you can um, move in the right direction towards so, your goal. <clears throat> do you cut yourself off after that 15 minutes? You're like, nope, I am not allowed to yes. be past that time. That's what we recommend. If you're working with a professional, then we'll say you can do two to four hours. Yeah. But on your own, 15 minutes is really more than enough time. Interesting. Yeah. So what do people do with the things that they're no longer using or wanting? That depends. When we go in and talk to people, some people have a lot of things that are sellable, so we'll match them up with a company that can sell items for them. Um, others are doing more donation or they have a passion for a certain um, nonprofit group, so we'll yeah. match up donations that way. And um, then we also work with companies like Camo Crew who will recycle items and keep them out of the landfill. So really our last choice is to have to dispose of something. Um, and we do suggest people also offer things to friends and family. We know lots of times friends and family don't necessarily want all the things that we no longer want or need, but it's nice mm -hmm. to ask. And if they're selling their home, sometimes the buyer wants some of the, you know, the lawnmower or a table that fits just right. Um, so there's lots of options and great. it's great to kind of explore what's going to be the best fit. Like thinking on her answer on this and all the people that we know that we and that we could connect her with like hey this could be for good for this portion or this portion yeah, or this portion. Yeah. That's interesting so I love it. Do you, do you ever do any estate sales with any of that too? So um, our company doesn't get into the selling part but we work with estate sale mm -hmm. companies. Mm -hmm. We're there kind of helping people make those decisions. Should I keep this? Should I not? So then we don't want to turn around and profit from the things they're not keeping mm -hmm. but we have amazing partners that we work with that can do the selling and the um, donating nice nice so do you have any certifications or other acknowledgements in your field oh, I mean gosh. is there like a moving <laughs> there is we're part of a national association <laughs> so wow. yes we are members of the National Association of Senior and Specialty Move Managers it's awful oh, wow. And we have their highest level of accreditation. So we went through a process where we're vetted by our peers and we have to um, make sure we have all our policies and procedures in place, our insurance is um, appropriate for everything we do. And then um, they review that and we, we were awarded that A plus accreditation. So we're very proud of that. Um, and then all of the people in our company who are full time are also have a certification as a senior and specialty move manager. So that's a whole nother series of classes that we take on ethics and working with seniors and specialty things we need to know about the moving industry and so it's another thing we're really proud of. We're A-plus accredited with the Better Business Bureau. We got their um, ethics award in 2022 so I mean we're just really proud of those things that we're showing we go above and beyond to be good, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. good to our clients and good to our community. That's so important. It just, mm -hmm. I mean, like when you think about the aging community and they're, you know, they don't have a lot of people that they can always rely on. Um, and you're bringing in some, you're, you're showing, hey, I am, I really care. I'm bringing in the best for you for this reason. And taking the time to get those certifications might not mean a lot to everybody, but I bet it means a ton to a lot of people. So that's really good. Congratulations mm -hmm. on all Thank of that. You. Sounds Thanks. great. So what is one tip that you know that you can give that you know a change another business when they implement it? You've been around 20 years. You have to have some great tips. Yeah, I guess the best general tip that I've learned is that as you're going through, you'll kind of be hopefully growing and you'll hit a point where things start to feel a little uncomfortable mm. and you have to make an investment either with time or financially and it's scary. Mm -hmm. And my tip is, you know, calculate your risk but make that jump because it always opens doors that you never could even imagine so um, don't be afraid to invest in your team invest in your business invest in yourself so that you can continue to be the best for your clients and for your business say goodbye then say hello right yeah right. tie back in with the quote it's <laughs> all coming together yeah 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 so if somebody were to reach out to you what what would their experience look like well, like what are the first things that would happen oh good question so people usually either call call in or we also um, have 
forms on our website that you can reach us and we'll go through some questions just to see what what you're looking for if we're a good fit and then we schedule a complimentary consultation which is just a nice time for us to come out meet with you see where you're at and then work on that game plan that I mentioned and that really sometimes we come back for our follow-up and people say I've slept better in this last week since you were here than I have in months because I've been stressing out and overwhelmed and and really just getting that game plan in place Mm -hmm. makes all the difference and when we come back for the follow-up we'll have an estimate and a service agreement to decide if you want to use our services and then from there it's a beautiful thing for our clients who are moving our team of uh, women will come in and they'll pack everything up we'll coordinate the movers get it moved to the new place and then set everything up so when a client arrives the bed is made the pictures are on the wall everything's unpacked the boxes are out of the way and it's a beautiful beautiful thing that makes you're not only moving them you're like you're setting them up after you move them right yeah yep that initial consult we're measuring their furniture so we know ahead of time where things are going to go and how it will fit and Mm. really take a lot of those stressful parts of moving out of the process well, that's awesome. Well, it was great to have you on the show today to learn about smart moves and uh, learn about how we can start preparing in 15 minutes a day, because some of <laughs> us, it might take us to start now. Set the timer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for joining us today. And do you have any other offer events besides the complimentary consultation? Do you have anything else going on that you want to tell our audience about? We have just wrapped up. We had an electronic recycling drive. We've done a shredding event this year, and we're they were very successful. So we're planning to continue those services for the community. So if you watch our Facebook page, we post things like that there. So uh, awesome. keep in touch and we'll let you know what's going on. Awesome. awesome. Thanks for joining us today. Yep. Great to meet you. Thank you. <clears throat> and now we are sending it back to Sarah Deacon from Sarah Deacon Coaching for some insight. On- I'm back. Um, when I think about improving business, uh, I think about relationships. That's the other thing that comes up besides messing up. Um, And sometimes we do mess up our relationships. That's okay. One of the keys to good relationships in both our business and in our personal lives is being intentional about our communication. And if you're anything like me, you replay the messy conversations over and over in your head and you wonder how you can let go of that drama and create the kind of interpersonal dynamic that you envision for your family or for your team. A simple tip is to begin conversation, uh, getting clear with yourself about what you're looking for from that interaction. So that's setting the intention in a, con- in a conversation. And setting that intention, especially when you're looking to maybe offer or receive feedback from someone, someone you care about at home or a team member at work, that can set you up for a successful interaction that leaves all parties feeling seen, heard, and understood. And that's really what we all want. This is especially true when engaging with teen or young adult family members or staff. I created a free guide to help parents set intentions and find new ways to connect with their teenagers. Because the last thing you want while building your business is to have to deal with extra drama from your teens at home. So you can download my Teen Talk Tactics conversation starting guide at my website, sarahdeacon.com slash tactics. Thanks. We have up our second guest of today, Kenneth Weiske. Weiske. Which, by the he way, he just told you he I didn't know, even beat me up. I know. And by the way, is Melinda's brother. Just Love so it. we all know, it's Mel- it. they are like totally related. So if you can <laughs> see the see the the comparison, I can see it. Absolutely. Anyways, Ken is a passionate leader who enjoys helping others see and pursue their potential. And their offices are right next to each other on Highway 100, like right next door. It's a great family dynamic, right. you guys. Through his work in his business endeavors, teaching and coaching experiences, and various other projects, he is always striving to grow and improve so that all involved are better as a result. Welcome to the show. Thank Thank you you for not coming up here and beating me up for totally Mm -hmm. your name up. I apologize. We're going to dive right into the audience question again. So when thinking about improving your business, what are some of the first ideas you have that come to mind? Yeah, I think a big emphasis over the last couple of years for me has been improving the culture at work. And I think if um, if you go to work every day and you don't like where you're at and you, uh, you kind of dread getting there, then that 
creates a, a workspace where it's not as productive or things aren't getting done the right way. So I'm um, really improving the culture and trying to um, keep things positive and keep people motivated, I think is um, a really important thing for any business, um, no matter the size of the team. Some people I know work alone. Um, you still want a positive environment. Still and culture. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, or some people live in uh, a world where they might feel like they're one of many and they might get missed. And so um, creating a culture where people are valued and um, it's a positive work environment, I think is um, really critical. That's a super mm -hmm. important point mm -hmm. because a lot of like where you're having like everybody's starting their own businesses and stuff, a lot of times they're doing it exactly for that reason. I don't want to deal with the culture of the place that I'm with anymore. Yeah. I could do this on my own. I'd rather be on my own than work in this environment. And that's exact. That's so important. Not enough mm -hmm. people focus mm -hmm. on that. Leadership is key. Mm -hmm. So your business is uh, Ideal Logos. What kind of services do you provide there? Sure. So just logos. Yeah. Well, um, the the easiest way to explain to people, I usually say, if you want to put your logo on something, we can do it for you. So in-house we do screen printing, embroidery, awards, banners, signs, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we can also help people if they need things like pens or business cards or all those other promotional items. Um, so we pretty much do it all. Um, I always tell people, if you don't know if we do it, you can ask and we probably do. And um, if we don't, we can usually point you in the right direction. So. Um, that's kind of the simplest way. We work with a lot of businesses, a lot of schools, teams, um, pretty much cover the whole the whole gamut. A lot of people don't do both. A lot of people either do the screen printing or embroidery, but don't mm -hmm. generally, you don't always find out where they do both. So that's nice. You can have like a one-stop right. shop. We really try to be that one-stop yeah. shop. And uh, again, if, um, <clears throat> if it's something I don't think we can do, um, we have a lot of resources and companies we work with. So I try to point people in those directions. I really encourage people always to shop local and small Absolutely. business because there's plenty of websites you can go and get the same thing but you're not going to get the same service and, and the um, service or the quality probably right. mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. and we're i'm new to using his service with the greenfield chamber he's printed us some brochures now and made some uh, window clings and service has been great so far so oh, that's great yeah, yeah. that mm -hmm. is good to know always mm -hmm. looking for that especially mm -hmm. in marketing so why would i choose ideal logos over any other similar company well, again, I think it just comes down to that local, um, that supporting local. Uh, being a small business, we can give you a lot more personal attention, and um, you know, we we try to do a really good job of working with the customer to learn more about what the project is. I just had somebody in yesterday, and we talked a lot more about. Um, you know, they said they wanted a bag, and I said, well, what are you using the bag for? And I just kind of dive a little bit deeper because I can send you some ideas for a bag, but it's completely the wrong mm -hmm. bag for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, but just as one example. So that personal touch, our customer service, I think is um, second to none. And um, you know, we really try, we strive to meet the needs of the customer regardless of the size of their order, the size of their company, um, and any really on any budget. Nice. So what is something a new customer should know before starting a project with your team at Ideal Logos? So we've been working really hard and we'll have some things coming out soon where uh, if somebody wants to place an order, it's kind of a checklist of what, what do you need to have before you come to us? Because we have a lot of orders that get stalled or there's a lot of back and forth mm -hmm. that I think um, we can save everybody a lot of time. So um, the biggest thing is everybody's order needs some sort of an uh, artwork, whether it's just text or it's a, an image or whatever it is, um, and so making sure we have the correct art for your your order, and that's probably the biggest hurdle we overcome. Is people say, um, "I don't care, you just you make it, you do what you want," or <laughs> we have these three ideas, we don't know what we want, and we we really try to work with them. But if we can get those things um, figured out ahead of time, uh, I do have a full time graphic designer and uh, three artists on staff, so we we can work with those ideas and and get what you need, but um, but it. Any of that that can be done ahead of time really helps expedite, uh, mm -hmm. you know, make that process go a lot smoother. Absolutely, that makes perfect sense. So, what makes your business stand out, and why do people love what you do? So, I took over the business about two years ago, and um, it was established and um, really a pillar in the community for a long time. Um, and the connections with specifically the schools in the area were, were really, really strong. Um, and so, I think. Building on those, um, on that foundation, has been really important, and and um, it's really helped you know, people say, well, I know I, we came here for my son or my daughter's spirit wear. Um, we also want to do this, this, and this, and so um, building on those relationships has been really, really important, um, and and I think that's probably what makes us stand out compared to 
a lot of maybe larger companies or similar companies that, that might not have those uh, strong foundations of relationships. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's interesting that you and Melinda work side by side, but I can't figure out, and I've been trying to for the last 10 minutes, how you guys could team up on a thing. Like, how does printing anything involve anything to do with moving a senior? Like, they just don't even cross at all. <laughs> well, we, uh... <laughs> marketing. Marketing. I, I just think marketing all the time. I'm thinking, like, how can you guys, like, do a joint effort on something? We are working together all the time, and, yeah. uh, and it works out very well. And I always um, kind of think and joke around sometimes there's, there's uh, three siblings in the family, and um, we all went to college, and mm -hmm. none of us are using our degree specifically. Oh. <laughs> um, we all had very different paths, and those paths changed multiple times. But I think um, we've used all of those experiences um, from our backgrounds and, and those things we've learned to, to kind of guide us to where we are now and doing the best possible um, job we can do. And um, we collaborate very well. I was gonna, um, yeah. And, you and get your own little networking event every time you got a family <laughs> dinner. Absolutely. That's pretty I cool. <laughs> well, it was great to learn about you and your idea logos and um, all the things that you guys do. Do you have any special offers or anything else coming up that you want to tell the audience about? You know, throughout the year, sometimes we'll have some, some sale events mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, nothing, nothing in the works right now. We try to do some customer appreciation things around the holidays, and, um, and usually in the spring, we might have kind of a sidewalk sale and things like that. So um, again, kind of like Melinda said with her business, if you just pay attention on our website and our social media, then um, you'll be in the loop on all that. Awesome. And we have a page for both Melinda Stewart. It's the connectshow.com forward slash Melinda Stewart and connectshow.com forward slash Kenneth Weisk, W-I-S-K-E. So if you guys want to find out more information on them or reach out to them, go to the website. Amazing. And that's a recap. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. What I love the, like, the extension of information we have today. Like We're going from something super important to really everybody in their life when mm -hmm. we all have to move on at some point, right? Whether it be moving, a lot of people try to stay in their home, can't always work, but then logos and apparel. I always, I'm like sitting here thinking about all the things I really want to order for I like know, the food truck like website, like I have candy. all this stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, I could have ideal logos do it all because I have embroidery, I have scraper, I have tons of things that I want to do, but. Anyhow, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just really enjoy getting to meet new faces and mm -hmm. see the different aspects of life go on. So, um, Yeah, I was that. really intrigued with the, the family dynamics of the two guests. Today. I think that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, the that's fact really that we ended up that. with, yeah. you know, because a lot of times we're filling in gaps for the shows for guests, and mm -hmm. then we end up with two spots to have an actual family. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Yeah. It worked out well. Yeah. Thank you. So with that, Heike, who do we have on next week? Well, next week, we're featuring Nicole Schmidt, who specializes in human resources compensation consulting. As a business owner, once you start hiring, you really need to know what's the right pay structure for your employees. And then we have Megan Gregoric and Rodrigo, who focus on project management. So definitely two topics that small business owners need to familiarize themselves with in order to grow. And so I hope that you will join us again next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central. And with that, thank you everyone for joining us on our show today. Please help our community grow by reaching out and inviting one person who you feel will benefit from being a part of our journey as a guest, as a contributor, as a sponsor. Please also like and subscribe if you're on social. This little act goes a long way in our reach. And if you like something you saw, please comment. We will see you soon.